Hello everyone. After having just finished Among the Sleep, I wanted to come back and do kind of a review and also just give my thoughts in general on it. So the beginning of this video, and the majority of it, is going to be very light on spoilers, so don't worry. Towards the end, I do want to get into more some more spoiler stuff, but I'll warn you in advance. So what is Among the Sleep? It's a horror game where you play as a two-year-old. As you can see if you look down at your body. And let's delve into the game. I feel like the best part of the game is without a doubt the beginning. Roughly the first 20 minutes or so out of a two to three hour game. It's really strong. It gets off to such a strong start. It does a great job of introducing you to the fact that you're in the body of a two-year-old. You know, in the beginning, it's your birthday and you're being you're kind of being carried around by your by your mother. You're being fed by your mother. You're playing around in your playpen. And it really establishes the fact that you are a two-year-old. And it changes how you... The fact that you're a two-year-old changes how you look at the world and also how you interact with it and how you move around. How everything feels. It feels very different from most games because you're so small. Everything is so huge and it towers over you. And the way you move is is different. You know, you're, you're slower. Because your motor skills aren't very good. You can sprint, but it's a relatively slow sprint. And of course, there's no crouch or anything like that. Instead, if you try to crouch, it actually just makes you crawl on the ground. And crawling is actually very fast. It's probably about as fast as sprinting. The difference being you can't sprint forever, but you can crawl forever. So it does a great job of introducing you to that. Uh, it introduces you to your your teddy bear, which becomes your main companion. He's uh, right here. Here we go. Yep, your teddy bear talks to you. And you can hug him, and he produces light. So he's your friend. He's your safety. He's the thing that makes you feel safe. So it's a really strong start, you know? You're in this, this strange body. In this strange world where everything seems alien because you're so small. It doesn't feel like you fit in it, you know? And you don't know your place in the world at the beginning of the game. You don't know what you're going to be doing. You know, what am I going to... This is a horror game. What am I going to be doing as a two-year-old? What's going to go wrong? How am I going to overcome these challenges? I was wondering this. And the unknown is creepy. It's really creepy. So the strong the beginning was very strong. It was just everything was full of possibilities. I'm in this strange new body. It was really neat. But after the strong beginning, the game unfortunately gets rid of pretty much all of the mysteriousness for the most part and becomes very mechanical. The majority of what you do in the game is essentially a keycard hunt, or a key hunt. You might not be actually collecting keys, but that's essentially what it boils down to. For example, here's one of the first areas in the game where you have to actually kind of solve a puzzle. Again, this is very minor spoilers because the game is very easy. It's not really, it's not a tough puzzle game by any means. So I've got to collect these things. I've got three of them, let's put them in here. All right, so see, I've got three. I need three more, there's three more slots. It's a little counterweight thing where I need to fill all the slots back there with weight, otherwise I can't get to the end of this and get up there. So pretty simple. You need to collect these things and put them in here. And that's how the majority of the game really goes. In this case, I need to collect those little owl things to weigh it down. But in other parts, you might need to collect a puzzle piece, for example, to complete the puzzle, to continue on. And it's stuff like that. You're collecting things to open a door basically, to continue. It's very mechanical. Let me drive home exactly what I mean by that even more. So I've got three of the pieces back there filled in. I need three more. And what is this? I've come to a crossroads. How many areas are there for me to visit? There's three. One left, one straight, one right. I've got three missing pieces. You go up here, you do, you complete the little area, and you find one additional piece. You go forward, you complete that area, you get one additional piece. You go to the right, you complete that area, you get the last third piece. Put it back there, continue on to the next place, and do essentially the same thing further on in the game, but with different items. You know, not an owl, maybe next there a puzzle piece, stuff like that. So essentially the entire game comes down to one big key hunt to open a door. Literally to open a door. At the end of all of this, you know, once you finish this whole area, and I've continued on, you'll eventually get to a memory that unlocks a, a thing that you then actually use at a door. To get through the door, you need to get four of these memory fragments, basically. And that's what you do for the vast majority of the game. It's very, very mechanical. It's literally a big, souped-up, atmospheric key hunt. Get the pieces, bring it back, 
get another piece for the door, go to another area, get another piece for the door, go to another area, get another piece for the door, finally go through the door, and then the game ends. That's pretty much it. So that while, while the beginning of the game is full of possibilities, you know, it's strange, it's mysterious, it hasn't established its rules yet, you don't know what's going to happen. Unfortunately, once you kind of reach the first area here, it becomes immediately obvious that the game is extremely mechanical. It's so blatantly spelled out. There's really no doubt about what's going on. It's not like you don't even know where to find the pieces necessarily, it's... I mean, it's spelled out. You go to one area, you get a piece. You go to the next area, there's another piece. Third area, there's all the pieces, and then you go back and put them all in. It's just so... boring. It's not really an interesting action, there's no element of mystery to it. You just go to the place, and you do the thing, and you put in the pieces, and then you're done. That's really it. I don't want to progress too far here, because I don't want to spoil it. Nor do I want any extremely loud and disturbing noises to happen, for that would be distracting. Although disturbing noises are already happening. But yes, so the majority of the game you're doing just that, collecting stuff, and it's not particularly interesting. And it makes the inner workings of the game blatantly obvious, and understanding how the game works, mechanically, is pretty much the death of horror. It's really hard to find something scary when you when everything is so blatantly mechanical. So as a consequence, the game is, well, it's not really scary. It's really not scary at all. However, I will say this though, it is creepy. Not scary, but it's creepy. A big reason for that is because of the sound design, which is generally really excellent. I mean, here, let me I'll let you have a listen for a little bit. You can hear just... you'll be able to hear just how creepy everything sounds. The atmospherics are wonderful, so have a listen. So yeah, it just sounds great. So many creepy sounds, things clanging in the distance, the wind, and groans, and just strange stuff that just sets your imagination alight. You're thinking, what's out there? You know, what is making those noises? So it's quite creepy. <laughs> God, the thing's creepy. There's another weird noise. There's just so many strange noises. They've done a really good job on the atmospheric sounds. And that really helps it feel creepy, even though it's not scary. And of course, let's talk about the art direction. The art direction also makes it look very creepy. Everything's just menacing and strange, glowing eyes, and of course everything is huge because you're so small. Everything towers over you. It's a really good looking game, frankly. I really like the art direction, it just, it looks great. And that really helps it be creepy, along with the sound. That sounds so strange and, and atmospheric and foreboding. So they've done a great job there, but again, because of the very mechanical, boring nature of the majority of the gameplay, it's really hard to find it scary. It's, it's just creepy, not scary, unfortunately. So I was mentioning that you collect stuff, it's essentially key cards, you know? Key cards, keys, open doors, that's basically it. But as far as what you actually do, like how you interact with the things in the world, it's got this really nice physics system kind of reminiscent of Amnesia and the Penumbra series, where you can pick up most objects, you can rotate them around, you can throw them. And that's really cool. I feel like that really helps you feel, it really helps me feel like I'm part of the world, because I can actually interact with so many different parts of it, and manipulate things. It just feels good, right? What the? I just face through the ground. That is very strange. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it really helps the world feel alive. It's not static, you can grab stuff, you can move stuff, you can touch stuff, it just feels good. It really feels good in a game to be able to grab stuff, and things like that. It's great. However, even though you can grab so many things, you really don't need to use the physics interactions very much. It's very rare. The majority of your interactions are just opening drawers to get up on them. So you open drawers to get up on them, you might move us, you might move a, a little 
like a little stool in front of a door to be able to reach the door handle. So even though you can interact with stuff in many physical ways, such as this, let's move that. There we go. You can do stuff like that, but stuff like this is a rarity. The majority of the time, you're just opening up drawers to be able to get up on stuff. Or moving a stool into place so you can get up on it, like this tree stump. So you can get up to somewhere higher. And that's pretty much it, so I feel like the physics interactions are really underused, because you don't really use them that much, or you don't use them in very interesting ways. Which is unfortunate. That's part of the unrealized potential of this game. What if I can ride this thing? Nah, it's too tall, I can't get up on it. So it feels good to, you know, move gates around and stuff, but most of the time it just isn't really part of the gameplay. Or it isn't part of the gameplay in an interesting way. So that's most of my thoughts as far as the non-spoiler stuff goes on this game. Again, it's pretty good. It sounds really good for the most part. Oh, I do want to mention, although the sound design of the creepy sounds happening in the, in the background are very good, I feel like there's one weakness with the sounds though, and that's the physics interactions. Uh, can I find something to pick up? There's not a lot of stuff to pick up here, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, a lot of the physics interactions, when you pick up something and, say, throw it against something else, there's often not really a sound for it. You pick up something and you throw it against the wall and it doesn't really make a sound sometimes. Or it doesn't make an appropriate sound and it just sounds weird. So I feel like the sound design in terms of the way physics objects interact with each other and with the environment is fairly weak most of the time. But the environment sounds are very good. And again, the art direction and the way they've executed the graphics in this game are very good. It's very creepy, and very good looking. It's just generally an interesting game to be in, because of the art, because of the sound, and also because of the unique... the unique character that you play. It puts you in a unique position, where you're slower and more vulnerable than you normally are in a game. And it makes you think of the world in a little bit of a different way. Not dramatically different, but a little bit differently. You can't sprint like crazy, Everything is bigger than you. You have to think more, not in terms of, like, going through a door, but more in terms of, like, how do I go up to get to a handle? You know, you gotta go up. You gotta make your way. You have to make your own ladders and stuff like that to get up somewhere. It complicates your... It complicates your movement through the world, which is interesting. Not something I get to experience very often. But in the end, the majority of what you do in the game is really just quite boring. The stuff you do, the physics, is not particularly interesting. The majority of what you do is just picking up pieces to complete a thingy to go through a door, just a bunch of key cards or a bunch of fragments of a key, that sort of stuff. Which is unfortunate, so I feel like it... There's a lot of potential there that went, unfortunately, untapped. Okay, so that's the review part. Now I'm going to get into some spoiler stuff, so if you're worried about spoilers, turn away now. Again, if you're worried about spoilers, turn away now. Are you gone yet? No? Yes? Maybe? Oh, regardless, I'm gonna continue on. Okay. Let's talk about the end of the game. Well, actually, scratch that, let's talk about the beginning of the game. So, it establishes early on that you're a child in the middle of a troubled relationship, right? A troubled marriage. Or, like, I don't know, maybe they've broken apart at this point, I'm not sure. But, a troubled relationship. You know, your mother seems happy at the very beginning of the game, and your father stops by. Everything goes all weird, everything goes fuzzy and loud, and there's yelling. And then your mother comes back in the room, and everything's back to normal, you know? It's all happy faces. Obviously, she's just putting on a face for you. So it's obvious the relationship is broken. There's something very wrong. And then later on, you start to find uh, bottles of alcohol and stuff like that, and drawings that look like... Uh, well, it ends up looking like the dad. It definitely seems like the game wants you to think that it's the dad that has been drinking and is a drunk, and that's probably why he doesn't live at home anymore. And he's just generally a drunken, probably abusive asshole. That's obviously what the game wants you to think. But at the beginning of the... at the end of the game, there's a twist. The twist ending is that it's actually your mother who is the drunk. And your father is actually a good guy, just trying to take care of you. So, it's got a twist ending, but 
I realized something. When the twist happened, I realized that I didn't care. Like it happened, but I didn't feel shocked. It's not that I knew that was the case or suspected it, I didn't at all. Not in the slightest, I just accepted it was the dad, but the twist happened and I realized I didn't care. So I thought about why I don't care and I realized it's because I really didn't feel engaged by the story. Which makes me a bit sad. It's obviously a, a very disturbing story, I mean it's a two-year-old child going through a nightmarish world of his nightmares, probably brought on by the fact that his parents have a fucked up relationship. You know, it's not easy to be a child in the middle of uh, a failing or sour relationship between your parents. It's not easy. I know it's not easy because my parents divorced when I was quite young. And it wasn't a happy divorce. It was a divorce with lots of yelling and custody issues. It fucking sucked. And I hated it. I wasn't two, of course. I was older, but still. So, what I'm saying is it's a story that I certainly would think I would feel a lot for. Right? Child in the middle of a fucked up relationship. Everything's horrible. And it's a really bad position to be in. I get that, and I would think that I would feel really strongly about it, but the fact is I don't. Throughout the game, and with the twist and everything, I didn't really feel much of a connection to the story at all. And I'm trying to think of why. I suspect it comes down to the mechanical nature of the game. You know, it's really hard to feel immersed in anything. If you can just reduce it down to a series of discrete steps that you need to complete to finish the game. And since the game pretty much explicitly acknowledges that it is, hey look, I'm a game, I have a door and you need to collect things to get through me. Since it so obviously reveals its mechanical nature, it's really hard to feel immersed, and thus really hard to care about anything that's really happening. Because it's so obvious it's a game, I can't, you know, that uh, sense of immersion never really happened. I always felt like I was in a game, I never forgot it for a second. It's always, I need to get the next keycard piece, I need to get the next fragment, and whatnot. So I never became immersed, so I never cared that much about the story. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Just wanted to examine my feelings on, on the story and why I didn't connect to it. I'm still not sure if that's why I didn't connect to the story, but that's my best to guess, I guess, I guess you could say. Alright, well, there ends my thoughts and my review on Among the Sleep. So, I hope you got something from it, I hope you found it interesting, and thank you for watching.